Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Meta HSC Valorant. And like I said earlier, this is the national, well, kind of group stages before we head into the playoffs. It's still early on. And finally, our second game of the day, Eviction Notice versus uh, St. John's High School. Now, I'm Digital Cast, and of course with me, the man himself, Slim Shady, has Daddy Slim. How are you doing? I'm doing well, dude. Good to see you. Uh, we are looking at ourselves a nice little game here on Icebox. It's best of one. And uh, one of these teams that gets through here will go through to the grand finals of our round robin to try and get that number one C for the grand finals that will be coming up a bit later on uh, in the month. But both of these signs, if you were with us earlier, St. John's uh, cruised by uh, up against, well, a, uh, <laughs> a, a four stack of players. It was, it was yeah. definitely an interesting game. So they are slightly warmed up. They're ready to go there. Meanwhile, the Glen Waverley guys have been waiting. They've been rubbing their hands together. They're uh, grinning ear to ear as they get the chance to play these guys. And it should be a very decent match. We've also got five players on each team now. Big plus. I think that'll make things a bit more even across the board. And, I mean, did both of these signs, especially people looking at the one before, uh, we had the MVP, of course, Mr. Chopper Steve, who was doing very well on that stage. Now is the opportunity to do it against a full stack, and I'm hoping, hoping we might be able to go all the way here, or at least get a bit further past the 13-1 we had previously. Hopefully, or it could be another 13-1 on the other side, because you said that uh, Eviction Notice, you favor them a lot, and they are good, but hey, look, let's just get into the game right now. Agent Pick Select, and of course, Man at HSC is sponsored by Optus, Torrens University of Australia, and MSI. All right, Slim Shady, let's take it away. Yes, as both sides going to be going through what they want to pick up here. It's looking like Oppo is going to go immediately on towards that Sova. Locked in and ready to go. He wants to get that one started. He's making sure none of his teammates still have that one off him. Could be possibly looking at a five stack of all if maybe they all pick Sova. As you could, I mean, you definitely can do that as both teams are... Well, they've sort of half locked in their players, sort of waiting to see, having discussions. Looks like St. John's going Celeste on the Viper. Chopper Steve picking up the Sage again. Bingzu will sit on the Sky. So going to be looking for a lot of Horde Clashes coming out there. And Hina, well, oh, he's the attacking man, looking like he might pick up the... Well, I was going to say the Rainer, but now he's thinking possibly and has locked in a look onto that jet as uh, the Glen Waverley Eviction Notice boys still just deciding what they want to go through here for their picks. It's a bit of a almost mirror matchup, but the thing about Icebox is the current meta, the, the, the composition you should be playing consists of a core three of Viper, Sage, and Sova. And that's what we're seeing right now for St. John's. And of course, the final two Select agents are of agent. the core three. You can either run a double duelist, but one usually is Jet, and the secondary duelist is usually Rainer. But on this side, though, St. John's, they've chosen Sky as a secondary pick, which is... Interesting. I mean, it kind of works, but Icebox is a little, little, little bit of a big map, so the um, the the Tasmanian Tiger, its effective range is kind of cut short a little bit. So, on the other side, though, Eviction Notice, they have a Killjoy and running a single duelist as well, so... I don't know, man. It's a very similar matchup, all things considered, but I do have to give the favor over towards um, St. John's, because having that Sova on a map like Icebox for your executes, it's going to help you a lot. Yeah, definitely able to pick out where those players are, especially if they're starting on the defensive side, which they will be. So maybe that's what they were thinking when they wanted to pick that one up immediately. Zompo, he locked that in pretty much uh, instantaneously before any of these other teammates or any of uh, anyone from the Glen Waverley eviction notice uh, really put forward any of their players as we are now getting ready to start this first round. And I mean here, it's going to be interesting, I would imagine for a lot of these people trying to get these first ones out of the bounds. I mean, you want to be starting off strong here. You want to try and get that pistol out of the way early. It looks like they're going to be stacking towards that A side. Well, they're going to be running into two players, it seems, over on the other side of things. So, either Asna and also Lazy going to be having to deal with a fair amount of pressure early. As we are ready to get underway. Digital, let's get us started here on Icebox. Absolutely. Once again, it's the best of one. Double Elam bracket. Now... A little bit of a hot start coming out from St. John's and Lazy. He's very close to the attackers right now. And he could potentially be in a good spot to strike. They haven't fully cleared the corner. And oh, he's a frenzy. That's, that's a lot of damage already done. One down to Hina. Dashes away to safety. Already one man advantage favoring the defense. However, the attackers are still aping onto the site and still trading back, back and forth. Ryan runs out there. Can't quite get the job done. Spike to go down. 3v3 post line. Yeah, this one with the Sage Wall will go up as well as they fall back towards a nest side. Trying to get back as far as possible. 
Oppo's going to get inside to go one further. Lazy with a third already in this round. The 2v2 situation. Running across the top. The fourth is Lazy looking for the ace. They know where they are all around that area. Throws down the smoke and starts the defuse. And now Chopper Steve needs to start pushing in. The problem is he's already pretty low on health. Managed to get the heal started, but it's going to be iconic finishing and off there. But Lazy with a 4k looking very nice as Eviction Notice to start us off with their first round there. The bomb plant did come through and uh, the spike went down nicely. All the guys over on St. John's, but unfortunately just couldn't get through that hold in the end. Yeah, look, it's, it's, all, it's all about lazy, right? Five out of seven charges for the Blade Storm already, and buying a Frenzy on a pistol round as Jet is quite risky because Jet's kit is the most expensive in the game, and after buying the Frenzy, right, you can barely really afford any other util. Maybe one other, maybe two, um, what do you call it, cloud bursts at the most, and it was a miracle they managed to survive for as long as he did. Getting four kills, that's just the cherry on top. Coming to this round, though, we are seeing... Um, a full buy coming out from the defense, but however, St. John's, I really think they could have forced a force ball into this round because they got the spike plant and took down three players. It's honestly not bad, but opting to go the classics, just go with a stack over towards the site, get the spike down. That's the best thing you can hope for. Take a few guns off of the hands of um, eviction notice. Yeah, he knew the only one picking up one there on the sheriff. Meanwhile, everyone else just sitting on those classics as. Already grouped towards this ace side, and they should be able to burst in here and try and get the bomb planted down. They're sort of holding back here, eviction notice guys, and they will allow that bomb plant to come in. So it's going to be a 5v5 retake. Lazy will pick the first up onto Oppo, though, immediately coming through from the top rafters there. And they're just sort of looking, they try and hold off as much as possible here, St. John's. They don't want to get into too many fights, they just want to hold these closer angles, see if they get one. But Hina coming in behind as well, that Sheriff could come be a bit lazy already with three Celeste will get two there with a classic, but Inferza shuts them down. Now Hina coming in the back lines, the bomb is already halfway defused though. And Arasna watching that angle from behind as Hina hits the floor, and that's going to be the second round on the board there. For eviction notice, I mean, not a bad round in the end there for St. John's. They get the bomb plant down, a bit of extra cash across, and now they can go in with the full buy. Yeah, that definitely helps a little bit more just to pad, of course, your economy and have some leftover money to bring into the future rounds. It's Think of the long-term goal, right? Um, in that round there, I just I would like to say that Hina was just a tad too slow on the mid flank. And as a result, you know, eviction notice, they, or they already grouped up playing very disciplined post-plant, waiting for all five players to get over towards A before they started the retake. And they just ran onto the site, guns blazing, full mode down, easy retake. Now coming to this bonus, lazy. Popping the blade storms early, I like that option, but he's playing defensively. I would like to see him, you know, go a little bit more aggro, but all things considered, it's not bad. Iconic starting things off, sprays down Hina. That's one rifle out of the hands of the attackers right now, as Big Zoo trades back. Yeah, there's a trade there from Big Zoo, but they lose their attack there. Hina, 0 and 3, not getting the start that they were after. Lazy, lazy with those knives. Looking around from the top there of rafters on A. He's going to start falling back. That was the bomb. So they're not deciding where they want to go here, St. John's. Looks like they're going to be heading back towards that A position. There's only one player there at the moment. Ryan looking like he might be ready to rotate across. And yeah, the rotate's starting to sort of come in. As Lazy's going to fall off. But they're seeming pretty willingly to just give up the sign for the bomb plan at the moment. And then just allow themselves to do the retake after that. Chopper Steve moving in now with that spine. Looking to get that planted and should do... With the wall up as well there from Iconic. He will take a bit of damage from that nade, but he manages to fall back out of it. The smite goes down to 4v4. Yeah, the Sage will, however, wasn't used just yet, which is unfortunate. I would like to see Chopper Steve use it and basically maintain control of the site. As all four defenders basically on the site, and the retake will start now. Oppo starts things off. Lazy trades back, but it's not enough. Tip for a tat, and a defense are on the back foot. Right, John, good for one. Has to land a second. Can't quite do it. But hey, three Warning rifles down. Remains. Four rifles down. 1v1. Iconic. He's very low. He could potentially get the bottle kill. Gets the kill. Gets the kill. What was that? He wasn't even aiming at him. He will get the defuse, and he will get a free rifle out of the hands of St. John's. Oh, that's so unfortunate for St. John's. I really thought they'd lock that one away when they had that 2v1 situation. Where Iconic just using the ropes and, yeah, not even aiming sort of, I mean, above his head almost. And unfortunately for Oppo, he cops it right in his dome. And just like that, a 3-0, the bonus round is absolutely huge there for eviction notice as they find yep. themselves with now the full buy coming up. They've still got a bit of extra cash on Iconic. And meanwhile... I sort of just have to go to the half by here, St. John's. You can see a couple of Spectres, the Marshal, Sheriff. So they're investing decently into the round, leaving enough that they should be able to get a full buy into the next, but such a rough round to lose right there. <coughs> Once again, <coughs> for the uh, attack take there, they 
got the spike down, but then they got offside to play post plant. And that's rough. You have a Viper and you have a Sova. You have some utils to play post plant with, but it's not the ideal util you want. You should have stayed on the side, in my opinion, and fought for side control. Well, bad side take, but unfortunately, it's getting a little bit scrappy right now. Spike finally comes on, and same old story. Discipline from Eviction Notice as they wait for the place to rotate over before they start to retake. Viper Spit is down, though, and that may be the win condition. I take it back as Ryan sprays him down through the smoke. Gets a triple. Oh dear, slim. I think the round's over. Drop a Steve now left with that Marshall at the back. You're already being flashed off it as well. Almost lands that one onto a now, but it's going to go wide. And four rounds on the board here for Eviction Notice. They've been doing it pretty nicely so far. They've just been allowing the bomb to go down pretty much each time on this A-side. But their retakes have been incredibly solid. Been using their utility to perfection. And 3k there from Ryan as well, just up towards Rafters. And getting that pick into Iconic, who threw out the ultimate as well. Trying to get something started there. Actually, I don't... Oh, sorry, I should say Celeste. And that one's gone now as well as, uh, you know, yeah. you lose that one. They had the opportunity to hold that in that towards the uh, smoke there. But unfortunately, they just couldn't get it through. They lose three players in the process. And now, again, this full buy, it becomes very important now. You don't want to be sitting 5-0 down, especially when they won't be able to really full buy into the next round either if they drop this. So a lot of pressure on St. John's as they again. Look like they might have favor to all this save, but it's more of a default this one this time. And it's going to be an interesting one there from Hina. It goes out early towards Rasner. Actually picks that one up, and they're going to have three just pushing straight towards B. And all of a sudden, there's a lot of pressure here on InShot. And they're going to go down, and just like that, Hina finally awakens up. He first two kills, and he opens up this side of crushing. And again, looking for a third Ryan will put him down. But the spike should be able to be put down as well here. Yeah, I think that... Uh third attempt there to, 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 to get a kill was a bit of an overextension from Hina. Getting the two-man advantage, that's already plenty. Just get the spike down, then pl play post-plant. 5v3, that's so doable, man. The defense, I mean, you don't really have any flashes, and you don't have much util to get onto the site with. So, 4v3, it's much more doable now, as I say that Bingsu already takes down Ryan. Half the manpower left for defense, as Lazy still fighting. He's making the numbers more doable. Now, Iconic, if he can't get this kill, it's going to be pretty much even Stevens. He does indeed, 2v2. Time is running a little bit short now. The spike ticked, the, ticked about halfway, and Lazy, standing. he could just stick it all the way potentially. He's not in the snake fight. He got a half, but unfortunately, the cloud burst, it doesn't last that long. As soon as it expires, Chopper Steves gets the timing, gets him down. Okay, one on the board now for St. John's. That's what they're after. Hina opening that round beautifully with that 2k over towards B. Probably did, yeah, I guess going a bit aggressive trying to get Ryan as well, but in the end they hold that one off pretty nicely. Survive with the two rifles as well, so they will, should be able to get a full buy across to most players. Celeste or Chopper Steve might have to buy a Pina unless they drop the rifle back towards spawn there. But uh, I mean, even so, for eviction notice, they lose that round, but they still have enough cash to put themselves in with a full buy as well. So again, another pivotal gun round. St. John's pick this up, they get themselves back in round uh, two, and then you're looking at a half buy probably from eviction. Eviction get this one though. And swaps all around, all of a sudden St. John's oh. are in a nice, well, not a nice spot, and Hina again, he's just getting taken out so early in all these rounds, a beautiful shot there from Razna, and already in a 5v4, it's advantage definitely towards eviction notice right now. Right now, St. John's, they are, they have the you right idea, they are playing stock standard defaults, but unfortunately, Razna just starting things off, okay. And they're overextending. Bingsu takes two down. It's just a scrappy fight over towards Nick. And look at this defense. They're falling one by one. You got two initial opening frags. Why are you pushing Medman? Suddenly the tides turn in St. John's favor. And now it's a 1v3. I, I don't think Lazy can really do this. He's still got an opportunity to. He's going to be coming in the back lines there towards through the attacker spawn. So he does have an opportunity to possibly catch one off guard if I'm not watching this angle. But... Such a round, they had that really under wraps. Hina's already spotted as well. We'll get dinked and then pulls off that angle as Oppo. Let's see if we can get anything there. But Lazy gets Chopper Steve. They don't want to give him these fights because he's more than capable of getting this done. He's already 10 and 3 here for eviction notice. And Hina's only on 21. Oppo sitting on about 70 odd as well. Just needs to hold the angles if they have those around the corner. If Lazy picks this one here, but Hina holding it beautifully. Hits that headshot, picks it up, and that is going to be around there for St. John's. One we thought was falling away, especially at the start, but an over, just a bit overzealous there from Eviction Notice going through mid when they really didn't need to. Maybe yeah. they just thought they weren't going in against a buy there or something. I'm not entirely sure what the idea was. I mean, if you throw numbers at it, sometimes it's going to work, but Bingzu holding that off angle more towards the start of that B long area gets a couple of kills, and just like that, it's thrown around, and 4-2. And now, again, they might be able to get through with a buy here. Again, Eviction Notice, in hit shot's going to be hitting, or his shot's going to be hitting up with the Judge, Meanwhile, Hina, oh, I'm assuming there's one on the ground, or maybe she's just going to be throwing out the knives as they start this push immediately towards B. 
Oh, the rotations are coming over swiftly though, that is an issue. They got the orb, that's good. Get those small wins first, and now... I mean, you have the Seekers, but... Now quite... Is it really the, the time to pop it? Rotations are already coming over for the, the defenders. If they don't get the spike down ASAP, it's going to be a really rough situation. The spike is going to get planted, but the wall gets destroyed. Lazy starts things off. High shot chimes in as well. And that's the spike that dropped in the crucial position. This ain't it, man. And the defender, Killjoy, also coming out as well. It makes things so much more difficult. Hina misses the knives onto the Lazy in a 5v2 situation. And now Celeste and Oppo left in a really hard position here. Celeste as well, getting flanked from behind. Well, let's to Raz now. The flash, though, putting him off that angle. And Raz gets one and two. As he was completely blind there, Celeste. Not really much they can do in that situation. And a clean round there from Eviction. And just like that, they get themselves their fifth. And they put the interesting position here for St. John's. Because, I mean, a few of their players can fall by. A few of the others... Probably going to have to sacrifice a bit of util and maybe mm. have to go for a spec as you look at Oppo, he's going to be picking one up himself. The, th the thing about that round was um, they had the right idea for St. John's. They took B longer control, but then they Turn sort of just hesitated for a bit longer. Now, the crucial thing is that the stage wall, that's one thing you can make use of, but as well as the Viper wall, it, it's not unlimited, so it will expire soon. And if you go too, too slow, you won't have that, that smoke wall to basically help you go for the plants. Well, fast push over towards mid here. Hina, right on the window. I don't think he can get this kill because that's a phantom on the other receiving end. Tip attack trade on site right now. And there you go, that's a sneaky remaining. angle. Woo! All the way from spawn, Iconic lands a neat, neat triple, and Chopper Steve, he is fighting back, but he's getting ganged up on from all angles. They know he lives, Chopper's Arisna just runs on our little peak, little bang straight to the head, and he gets his eighth kill of the game, and Pawn's Eviction Notice on their sixth round. Looking very nice here as they clean up what was particularly, basically, up against another gun round. Was a few, I guess, more sort of half by the suspector on Oppo. But now it's where St. John's, they find themselves in a really difficult position. You're already down four rounds. You can't full buy into this one. You have to go with these marshals and sheriffs, sort of have a bit of util here and there. As they look back towards this A site, they haven't, they've had a lot of plays getting onto this site easily and getting their bomb plant down. It's about holding it afterwards, which has been the problem for them. Erasmus is playing with full confidence right now. Look at how deep he is. He adds a sky as well. Even if he does get caught there, he can still flash himself out. There you go. There's a pop flash. He's trying to go for a pick, but he gets nothing. Full discipline falls back. He got the intel, and that's what matters. Two dogs to come through. And the two dogs encounter each other towards mid. Lazy throws things off. Looking for a little bit more, but the rotations for the defense are already here. Chopper Steve strikes back. Here comes Iconic. He does get a neat double before he, he goes down. Wait, hang on. The defenders, defenders are starting to aggress a little bit too much. Numbers are all tied up. Two on two. And this is an eco for St. John's. There's only one defense defender left on the A site. And the spike can easily go down right now. Ryan holding that off angle though. Celeste goes a bit too far forward. It could spell the end there as Bingsy will get the spike planted. Two v two retakes. They have an opportunity here as Bingsy trying to get around there. And Celeste actually getting as Ryan looks in the opposite direction. And now his heart is left in this one v two. Oh my God! No, the judge coming through gets the first one there. And Celeste will be able to put that down. The judge from his heart. Oh no no no! Saint John's. They had that one looking good. They'd thrown out the ultimate as well just to try and get it across. But Celeste walks Come in the on. wrong direction just like that. And Eviction, they grabbed their seventh when they really shouldn't have. And I mean, in the end, they were up against a half by there. So if they'd lost that round, they would have been pretty frustrated with themselves. In the end, it comes through all right. And St. John's, they'll be kicking themselves there. Again, another plant, another advantageous situation. And they just cannot put it through. That was rough, man. <laughs> that was really rough. It was a 2v1, and granted, they didn't really know that Highshot had the Judge. So if they did, they, they, they could have just played far back without the uh, the Viper's Pit and played the gun range advantage. Granted, there were a few guns down on the ground, but once he picks that up, you know, his position is given away. And it was just the timing. Perfect timing. Had the right gun for the angle. That's it. Uh, a tragedy right there. Erasna looking to go aggro again, but this time he will be the one to fall. Lazy's already there for the quick trade back, and the attacker is insistent on going over towards A. Down a player, though. The res is available. Bingus is already really deep in as well, as he might have got under without being spotted there. The problem is Lazy is also getting quite aggressive. Already the third around looking for a fourth. So let's put them down, and now Hina will get revived as well. So 3v3 situation. St. John's still the chance into this one. 
And the spike as well. So if they want to rotate, they can. All three players here from Eviction have made their way over towards the A side. Now it's going to be his hot making their way back towards B. And Ryan also getting lazy back up as well. Although, and Celeste going down. And that's the spike. So they know it's towards A. Chopper will get the trade back. But now in the 3v2 situation, they need to find a double here. And it's going to be a lot on Tahina if they can get this one here. If they can Lotus Ryan's in the close corner. They pick it. Chopper gets another one there. Almost misses the spray, but gets it through. Now 2v2 situation, 40 seconds on the clock. They can look to rotate if they want. Lazy jumping on up, though, and they get their timing here. Oh, this could be absolutely huge, depending on which way they're looking. It's the spray, unfortunately, when you're on that rope. Left. It's going to go a bit wide. He doesn't quite hit it through. does get a bit of damage. Now it's all down again. The time he gets one, Last but Chopper Steve there for the trade. Spike and now it is a 1v1, 20 seconds. And what out. happens here? Chopper was sort of faking like he might go back towards the B side, but in the end, he's going to have to stick here towards. A tries to go for the wall, but Hot's there waiting, holding the angle. And that is going to be round number eight from Eviction Notice. They're getting these rounds. They're not convincing. They're close. But the thing is, they're getting them. And just like that, already a six-round advantage. And what I feel like it's been a much closer game. Well... It did come down to you know, the uh, the 1v1s and everything, and high shot. That was his uh, second back-to-back -back clutch, Ouch. and it was time, right? Just timing all the all, the whole game long. Just then, it was 20 seconds left, and I suppose if you were in Chopper Steve's um, shoes there, you had some time to try clear a, a couple of angles before you went for the spike plant, but the Sage wall, right? I don't know, he, he put it kind of deep. You can't just seal it off and give yourself a tiny inkling space to actually go for a spike plant, but instead, I think he was trying to go a little bit deeper, and as a result, exposing himself to quite a few angles there, and he just goes down just like that. It, it was a really good start. They, he almost had it. It was just that tiny... I would say decision making at the end there that really put, it, put him in a rough position. And now it's an eco for St. John's. And look at this. The, um, from the noise they're making, the rotations from the defenders all over towards B. No one's even towards A. Lazy has the operator, starts things off. Heena's dead. Just like that, another kill on Tahina, who's just unfortunately not been able to put themselves to much wow. use here on Icebox, especially on the Ets attack early. Looking to still rush on towards this B side at the moment. They're really not sure what they want to commit here. Meanwhile, Arisna and Issa running through. Chopper Steve will get a nice shot there with the Marshall in a second as well. Lovely shooting from Chopper. The problem is now his health. He does have the spice. He wants to start a rotate. He can. The problem is he's also being held from behind. The miss there from Lazy. Chopper doesn't quite be able to get that one as well. And now the knives are out. They're looking to try and finish this one off as quickly as possible. He's down low. He's still shooting Chopper. Staying alive as long as possible, trying to do what he can, but Lazy will finish off 19 and 7. He's Last feeling it on that pitch. operator. He's nice. Everything he's picked up so far, been feeling good. And just like that, it's 9 to 2. One round left in oh. this first half, and eviction. They are on cruise control right now. It got close there. Once again, you know, a 1v2, and Ryan, he was. He was uncertain about pushing, just unsure if uh, Chopper Steve was going to back away and uh, go over towards A. So just sitting towards mid, and have full faith in his teammate Lazy to lock down the B side. Have the operator, have the blades, and a few rifles around him if he if he needs to pick him up. You know. So it really was up to Chopper Steve to pull something out of his hat. An absolute miracle. Another full buy right now, and Hina, he's pulled out the blades as well as the operator. Good start by Celeste, who catches Lazy going too aggro there a little bit late into the round. Trying to take over towards B to start things off. Erasmus straight right back. You know exactly where he is, though. He's in a rough spot, and he's getting burned alive. Celeste with some nice nades there to put him out of the way. And now 4v3. And he with a lovely shot into Ryan as well. And a big opportunity here for St. John's to try and get this spike one. But the spike down, goes hey. down there. His hot's going to be hitting Bingzu. And Killjoy has gone out. Is, there, is he going to try that? Oh, Oppo. Oh, no. Oh, big man, you, <laughs> what are you doing? You need to get away from that. You can't stick in that one. All of a sudden, it's back to a 2v2. And St. John's, they had the advantage. They'll grab it back here. Celeste with Unsure on the Phantom. And it's going to be Hina finishing it off. Iconic got one with the Celeste, but Hina there for the trade. And finally, they win one of the close ones, St. John's. Their third round as they now switch to the defensive. They have an opportunity to try and get back into this one, but it really needs to come down to trying to win a few of these early rounds. And it starts off with this pistol if they can hold one of these sites off well enough. Granted, that round, once again, came down to 1v1. Uh... It's close, man, but I have to say, the, the thing about the attack side just then for St. John's was one word, commitments. You either get on the site and you plant the spike, or you just get off in that situation there, especially with the Killjoy lockdown being deployed. Once it goes down, you have the time to plant it, safe even, or you get off and basically rotate and play with your team. But if, you, if, you, if you're trying to just halfway it and not sure what you're trying to do, that's what happens. You get caught out in the Killjoy lockdown, and your teammate smoke basically doesn't... 
it was almost there, but unfortunately couldn't quite save you. And once again, it was a lot closer than it needed to be. Fast beat like take coming out from me, but you notice, and the rotations are coming through, looking to be a 5v5 post line. So trying to get on towards this side to get the spike down. Looks like Ryan's going to be taking that one forward. Should be able to get up the wall, and we'll be able to plant that one down here. And yeah, the 5v5 begins. Ryan will go down immediately, though. Bingzu with that one. Lazy holding that angle with that Sheriff. Seems like they can pick anything up. They're just holding back, not looking to do much. He's not also throwing up that oh, kill joint grenade. That lands. It's going to hit very, very nicely. And Chopper Steve holding it. He's actually going to pass halfway. So close. We'll go down, though. He's got at least half. So let's pick up a couple as well. Now, he's hot and Iconic needs to hold this one off. They just get these back angles. Already Bingsu pushing them close, though, and Iconic needs to find something here. He goes down, and it's all left on toward his hot. Can't even stop the defuse, unfortunately, coming through. Celeste picks up their third, and that's what they needed there, St. John's. They hold it off very nicely. Four players surviving in the end, at least there for Richard. They will get the bomb plant, and they might look to invest into this one, or maybe they'll just look to save all the classics across and... It's looking like what might happen is, uh, here we go for St. John's. We'll get these by across with the Spectres and a chance to get round number five on the board and start their long road back to evening this one up. They have a five round buffer for eviction notice. So honestly, they're not too stressed about trying to force up. And if they lose it, obviously, it's going to guarantee a, what, a three round um, win streak for St. John's. So it's good what, what they are doing. Just, you know, save all the way. And Hina, oh my gosh, on defense. Great start. But Iconic claps right back with a classic. And A site's kind of ripe for the taking. <laughs> Although lazy. Jet Lurk by himself over towards mid gets tagged down to 12. He's in the rough spot and they are getting some damage through and they are trading tip for attack. The spike, however, not fully committed to A just yet. So I'm not too sure what's going what's the idea in this round. Toxin screen down. Be careful that just don't give themselves up here. Celeste will put Lazy down. So the advantage back here to St. John's. He's also gonna probably have chop up. So trying to get one on towards the side here, and I kind of put down Bing's new TV2 situation, a minute left on the clock, and also the Spectre picked up here from his heart. Celeste will put them down though, and it's now left on Iconic, the Sheriff in hand. He tries to get around the back here, if they don't check this angle, this could be huge, because he's almost pretty much flanked them already. So getting down towards the spike, and Iconic holding that angle, he gets a third, but Chopper Steve there for the trade, gets it across, and... They have to invest pretty much every single player, only one surviving, but in the end, you only need that one, and Chopper Steve gets up their fifth year for St. John's. It does mean they're going to be pretty rough into this round, though, especially if they want to get a gun round next. It's just going to be pretty small buys, you'd imagine, just to keep around that 2,000 credit mark. That's what's coming through Sheriff. So Chopper might be the only one with really real weaponry. Hina might invest there with a Spectre, but in the end, it's most likely just going to be Sheriff's. Meanwhile, Eviction Notice now have that full buy Phantoms across the board. And looking to try and get round number 10 here. They, once again, a lot closer than it needed to be. The defense, they had superior guns, but they gave up psych control over towards A. And basically, the attackers, only two players, by the way, with pistols, they got so deep onto A and started catching the defenders off guard to, to an extent. Lazy, great start. Snipes down Hina, who went really aggro that round. But this is, this is the bonus for, for, for these defenders. So you're not, they're not expected to win this round. Doing some damage is nice, although I don't think it's quite going their way, to say the least. Chopper Steve running up and towards rafters, but already it's left in a 5v2. Lazy's already got a 3-hand around the 22 and 10. As that Phantom's coming alive here to start their side on attack. His first gun round looking pretty solid here. For them here for St. John's and now Chopper and Celeste looking like if they can do anything here. Iconic puts down Celeste though and it's all left on Chopper Steve. Holding this back apple angle up towards rafters. He's already being sort of pushed there towards main as well. We'll get one there. Rithman trying to go a bit aggressive early and Lazy also pops up as well. We'll be able to shut him down. He's fourth. And that is going to be the round there for the guys on Glen Waverley. Eviction notice. Get that one across. And I mean, I think everyone was expecting that one to go through. You know, you had the guns there. And the reason they go down, they're going to have to invest into a Spectre rather than having a full rifle unless someone wants to, you know, buy them across if they're feeling really nice. Meanwhile, it's going to be St. John's picking up their first big gun round of the second half. And this is very important here. They get this one, 10-6. They continue the rollback. They drop this, though, an 11-5. And there's only two more rounds that Eviction Notice needs to close out this map of Icebox. Yeah, that's one thing as well, but also Eviction Notice, if they win this round, that means uh, St. John's economy is going to be flat broke. And that, uh, like you said, it'll guarantee match point at, at that point. Hina, similar story, similar angle, but uh, I'm not just too sure the Tiger spotted him out. The attacker's already deep over towards A, and Hina, he's the linchpin here. If he can choose well, the right time to strike, he can do so much world. damage. Lazy starts things off, and Hina, off angle. However, doesn't quite secure the kill. Spike to go down, Iconic is safe inside the Viper's pit. This is going to be a really rough retake for the defenders. 
Rizna makes it even harder, putting down Hina. 4v3, Chopper Steve already up to the top, and Rathas, Rizna just holding the angle, Rizna with four! Completely shuts down the retake just like that, an 11th round for eviction notice. Whew. Jesus. Not bad, not bad at all. And look, I just said, St. John's, their economy, it's, it's, it's rough, man. You cannot fall by in this round. So a half by is the best you can hope for. But then again, half armor sheriffs, it's basically an eco at this point. They are trying to play for overtime at this rate because a scrappy buy like this versus rivals, it's not going to work out in your favor, to say the least, especially considering how Eviction Notice have been playing this game all along. Full conviction, full confidence, and look at Razna, you know. He got shut down here and there, but when he is hitting his stride, he, God, guy's just an absolute beast. Looking to burst on towards the pace up once again. Hina trying to hold that off angle. Looking for something, but only the classic ad makes it so difficult, and already this site's been run over here. Lazy looking to try and get aggressive, jumping up towards it. Area Designs against going aggressing through that wall there of Celeste. Meanwhile, the spike has been planted. Lazy this time has managed to get the angle, finds them down there. Doesn't pick anything up. Finally, we'll put down Oppo. Chopper Steve though, on that Marshall has been feeling it every time he's got that out so far. Puts down Iconic, but Lazy again, another kill. It's actually Bings are going to be popping out the ult. They want to try and go for this, but Lazy picks up a third. And Rizna shuts down Bingzu, and that is round number 12, and also 7 map points map here point. for the side of Eviction Notice, and I'm not sure Bingzu really should have popped that, possibly saved that for the next round when they had yeah. this full bar, which they have now, but still, they have the three there, Hina, Chopper, Steve, and Celeste have theirs, meanwhile, Lazy, the only one with their knives ready over on the side of Eviction Notice, but 27 and 11, he has been absolutely feeling it so far. Now, the thing about Bingsu's ultimate in that round, there's really two scenarios in which you should be popping it. One, you pop your Seekers for intel. But however, they already knew the attackers are on a... The likelihood yeah, of a lurker uh, from, from mid, it's not the highest, it's possible, but... So, you pop it once for intel, and the second is when you pop it in a clutch situation as a distraction. That was neither of those two situations, and they had inferior guns. So, once the Seekers get a uh, Yonza site, they won't go very far before they get popped. So, 6, six, six point ultimate, man. I mean, he can maybe get it. But 5 to 12, there's not much room to left to work with. And look at the attackers. They got some intel over towards A and they're rotating back over towards B, in which there's only Celeste there inside there. the Viper's pit. He has a tough job to do. Down. Has managed to avoid them to Tiny. begin with. He gets that first deal for Iconic, spike and that's a spike down, down as well. So an opportunity here, but he will be shut down from Arisner and 4v4. Has allowed the rotate to at I'll least come in now. And the spike again put down. Bingsby picking up one there. And also Chopper Steve 4v2 now. Arisner and Ryan left in a very hard position. He's not holding the flank out as well. So it's hard to push away, but Ryan's getting one aggressive threat to an Arisner gets that one as well. Problem is going through that mid area. It's Hina and one, two. The operator comes alive for him, shuts it down. And we keep going on this one. The sixth round there for the guys on St. John's. They're not done with yet. But eviction notice, they've got so much in the bank credit wise. I mean, Ryan at a full 9,000 as they'll look to try and buy it. And they've only had the five kills as well, but they just haven't been going down that much in these last few. So he's uh, looking pretty good yeah. cash a bank there. As again, five phantoms across the board. Meanwhile, it's going to be another full buy as well for St. John's Bings. They're having to go down a bit there on Hina and also Celeste with a half armor. But very nice hold. They get that one across, and they've still got a few ultimates to use here. You could see this going at least another couple of rounds. They can hold the angles, and Hina through the smoke hits that beautifully on the operator. I don't think he's going to be ready for the drop down there. Oh, Ryan, he will be able to get away with that one for now, but they know where he is, and now as he's trying to hold this angle, he looked for it. didn't look like that was going to hit, but it didn't, and now the, oh, the revive coming in, Iconic and Arisna, and just like that, it's been swung all the way to eviction notice. Now it's just one left. It's all left on Celeste. And I think we might be done here, Digital. Yeah, we are. Lazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> better than him just kill out the final kill. It's a really rough si situation, man. Like, I, I don't want to be too critical, but, like, it's just... To say the very least, you know, in this game, St. John's, they were outclassed by Eviction Notice in terms of discipline, in terms of timing. Well, mechanical skill is one thing, but discipline is the main thing I want to focus on. Y you're either committing to a play or they or you back off but you don't go in between eviction notice right they commit to a rotation they go all the way they don't sort of just go onto site think about it and then you know try and rotate and if they are going to take a site and get the spike down they full commit everyone dives on they get full site control be and it's just so overwhelming for the defenders who are saint john's to really deal against on the flip side though 
In the final round there, you saw Hina, really great start with the operator, got one initial opening frag, but however, he felt like he had to do go for more. I can understand that when you're down 6 to 12, but however, you're sort of not really committing to one angle, and also, after getting that first frag, it's generally in your best like uh, intentions to uh, change your position, otherwise, you're stuck in the corner, they know exactly where you are. He used the cloud burst, and he had the dash, I was eyeballing that the whole time. He could have gone anywhere, but where does he go? Back into the corner in which he was sitting in the first place. I'm like, oh no man. There's a but this the snake bite comes out, bullets rain down, and he goes down just like that. The operator is such a big, impactful weapon, and just couldn't go any further than that round. Eviction notice, man, 13 6, well deserved. Yeah, they just were the better team there. And I mean, for St. John's, they had plenty of opportunities, but as you said, they didn't just quite commit to a lot of those attacking rounds when they were sitting at those opportunities. There were a lot of 1v1 situations and just after plants that they had the advantage. They had a really good chance of getting those rounds through, but they just couldn't. And unfortunately, it's going to cost them really hard in the end as they go down 13-6 and they're dropping towards that lower bracket. Meanwhile, it does mean that Eviction Notice are going to be going to our Grand Finals Best of Three, which will be going on, of course, uh, a bit later in the day. I believe we're hitting about 2 o'clock. We're sitting at 1.45 now, so we do have to wait until, of course, everyone else starts to come in. But yeah, I mean, so... so, so blah, 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 blah. Words are hard. So very well deserved there for eviction notice as they get that one across. And St. John's, I wouldn't be feeling too bad if I was them. Like, they definitely had some good rounds, some, some good plays as well. A few things I need to fix up, possibly with some team comms about the committing to science and just holding those after plan angles. But yeah, in the end, the better team won there. Eviction notice get it across, moving on onwards to the next one. As uh, well, now we're going to be going through, I guess, they'll thanking our sponsors again and then we'll be chop, jumping into a quick break but first of all our mvp and who have we got our cross i think it's pretty obvious uh because they were having yep. an absolutely stellar game well look our mvp for this game eviction notice it has to go to lazy i mean 28 frags that's one thing right you damn near 30 bombed in about 19 rounds but also looking on the leaderboard seven first bloods what does that mean? He's getting the first kill more often than first deaths and opening rounds for his team, as a Jet should, as a Duelist should. And that is already impacts for his team. And that's, you know, it just it just compounds into the commitment, into the overwhelming force of Eviction Notice, aping onto a site as a whole team, full confidence, and it just goes their way, getting all the kills. Lazy, you know, even if he does go down, he can at least, after getting that first frag, he can rely on his teammates Erasna, iconic, high shot as well to back him up because they're already on the site ready to trade. And guys, that's it. Uh, this game's done, the semi-finals, and our grands, you know, it will be eviction notice versus Rangitoto College real soon in about 14 minutes, 2 p.m. Catch you guys there after the short breather. Of course, Meta HSC Valorant is sponsored by Optus, Torrens University Australia, and MSI.